you think you know what we're going to talk about. And welcome back to Three Fates Decide. It just sounds more dramatic that way. All right, so this week we are going to be talking about... But just when you least expect it, we changed the game. One Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. I mean, we always celebrated Easter. Harry Potter the Half-Blood Prince. So we're going to do another free talk, freestyle thing, no planned discussion. At the end of the day, only one thing matters. We decide. We're going to hit the, the, the main highlights. That is the thing that we were saying back in that episode. A quick recap. Three Fates Decide podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Three Fates Decide. My name is Liz, and I'm with my two co-hosts, Mary and Sam. Hi. Hello. So if you were listening to our previous episode on the Black Dahlia, you will be aware that we are planning on a bunch of episodes for the month of October to be related in some way to the spooky and the macabre. So for this episode, we are starting a kind of like one of three parts related to monsters that are pretty commonly talked about around this time of the year. And for our first of the three, we are going to be talking about zombies and their hunger for brains. <laughs> brains. I'm just well, gonna. I'm. I'm just gonna preface, man. And I've told you, I hate zombies. I, I, that it terrifies me. That it actually could happen. You don't want to know what I think ruined it for me. I am legend. Mm. Ruined it. Yeah, we don't talk about that movie because because no. that movie was set in the was set in the year 2022. Oh damn! All right, we can talk about it next year. <laughs> Pretty sure that movie was set in the year 2022. Joy. Uh -huh. I, I just remember thinking like, oh, cancer, you know, cure for cancer, and all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> Manhattan's taken over by zombies, and the only person left is Will Smith and his dog Sam. Uh-huh. Poor Sam. We don't talk about the dog. Oh, Sam. We don't talk we, about Sam. We don't talk about Sam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but I, and I, I'm I on the that, complete that's... other Ugh. spectrum of this. I am like I love zombies. And though I didn't I did have not watched all of the Walking Dead. I, I've meant to watch all of the all of the seasons. I've just I kind of got like to season four and then Real life took over, and it's like, I uh, couldn't watch it anymore. Yeah. Happens. <laughs> yeah. My, my boss that was around the time like... I got pregnant. I remember. Ah, well, there you go. Or had a kid. <laughs> so. Real life. Real life. Uh, my, my boss is like adamant that there's going to be a zombie apocalypse one day, and he is packed and ready to go. I told him, we were talking about something. And he was like, dude, he's like, you got to be ready for the zombie apocalypse. I was like, I don't have to be ready. I'm coming to your house. Like, you're the one that's ready. Crossbows and like the guns. There's a house across the street. He lives in a very rich, rich uh, area of New Jersey. And, mm -hmm. uh, and he, uh, the house across the street actually has like a moat. I'm like, oh, good. We'll go there. Because apparently zombies don't like water. Fun fact of the day. Not according to uh, George Romero. The... <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, yeah. he, he's like the father of the modern zombie. Yeah, which maybe which old, old time zombies like, didn't like water. I, I've heard it out from a lot of places, though, that zombies don't like water. Well. Unless he's changing, he's changing it up. Well, we will talk about that very shortly, indeed. Uh, I'll um, climb a tree if I have to, I don't know. Well, somebody needs to tell uh, tell the fun pimps that in their uh, in their uh, video game Seven Days to Die, which is basically it's a zombie apocalypse survival game. Um, the zombies swim better than the fucking humans. What's better you know, than the humans? The zombies they swim better than the humans oh, do. Yeah. They're oh, faster yeah. in the water than the humans are. I'm like, how? How? I think the fun fun pimps forgot that zombies don't like water. Um, yeah. 
So I guess like we'll kind of split up this episode into like two parts, roughly. Where um, the beginning of the, this episode, we'll talk a little bit about. Well, historical is not really the right word per se, but you know, we'll talk about like the origins, so the origins and um, of zombies, and also similar creatures to zombies. And then towards the end of the episode, we'll talk about like all the different pop culture references and usages of the zombies. So, um, actually, before we start recording, I mentioned that um, there's this really excellent YouTube channel. Um, I will post links in the show notes for this episode. But basically, there's this excellent YouTube channel that's part of PBS Digital called Storied. And they talk about like folk tales, mythology, literature, etc. And one of their subcategories is their monstrum um series and as you could probably guess by the name of the title monstrum they talk about all sorts of mythological creatures cryptids and monsters in folklore and literature and naturally they did a three-part a three-part series on the zombie which um i happen to have watched and i will be using that as my reference um for some of the stuff I'll I'll bring up. Um so I guess like one interesting thing I discovered watching the series was like the very the very first part was talking about some of the origins of zombies. And as I mentioned before, there's like various creatures in different cultures that are similar uh conceptually to what we think of as the zombie. But one of the most recognized um origins of the zombie is actually from the haitian voodoo tradition and if you happen to be really interested in that sort of thing uh, both the culture and the history of that's of um zombies in that respect i do recommend watching that part in particular um because what it brought up was the fact that in voodoo the concept of zombies is pretty there's like some similarities and yet there's a lot of differences between what we think of you know in modern times of zombies compared to what they um call zombies and it's kind of interesting because it's very much connected to not only traditional african religions that the slaves, um, the former slaves in Haiti, you know, worshipped. But also there's some, you know, um, fear of slavery mixed in there as well. Because the concept of the zombie in that context is that it is a person whose spirit is being controlled and possessed by a basically a dark pra practitioner of voodoo who's using their abilities and powers to control people into doing what they're whatever they want and you have no say in it in other words a slave so i thought it was really interesting how the fear that you know the uh black inhabitants of haiti uh who honest you know especially those who do practice voodoo and believe in voodoo there there is some degree of fear of being turned into an actual zombie by somebody who wants to control you and manipulate you and you can't do anything about it so that was actually kind of interesting and the the other interesting thing they mentioned in it as well is how it especially in the US our understanding of what the zombie is is like kind of like part misunderstanding part exaggeration of the Haitian concept of the zombie which i just mentioned and there's also a level of racism and exoticism involved in in this portrayal as well because you know it's like ooh this mysterious foreign religion and you know this weird magic and all this creepy stuff is going on and it's like well you know it 
it's a it's kind of like a misunderstanding to some degree of what it's all about and the one thing i thought was interesting was in that particular episode one of the uh, experts that the host was interviewing to better understand you know this this origin of the zombie is actually somebody who is a practitioner of voodoo and to quote him he said that like it's easier for people to acknowledge the zombie part of voodoo rather than my humanity as a black practitioner of this religion and it is a religion to some people you know so it's like it's it's kind of a sad observation in a way that like people can acknowledge the creepy voodoo zombie thing but they don't acknowledge the humanity behind it so it was very thought-provoking i thought and um i know there's like another similar creature that um i believe mary could talk about uh the draugr which is also a creature pretty similar to, to a zombie as well yeah sorry uh yeah, the Draugr is um, more of like a Scandinavian Norse um, uh, creation, I guess you could say. Um, they're they're known. They're also known as Drog, Drag, Draugr, 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 and Dragon. And it's an undead creature from the Norse mythology. Um, the Old Norse meanings of the word are revenant. Undead man and ghost. Um, they they considered droggers to drogger to uh, they they still live in their graves or their cairns. Um, they are uh, reanimated. They are not actual corpse that has been reanimated there, so they're not like the ghosts that we think of today of the incorporeal forms of ghosts where they're they could just kind of go through whatever. These are like your. Um, Almost like what Walking Dead uh, zombies would be considered, I guess. Only slight, only um, less skin. Uh, and uh, they often guard the treasure that's been buried with them. And for and it for the Norse mythology, they believe that after a person has died, the main indication that the person will become a draugr is that the corpse is not lying in a horizontal position. So if it is be if it is propped up or it is standing up while after it dies, it's an indication that he will that the this dead may return. As and it said, any mean, nasty, or greedy person can become a draugr. And it says, however, unlike ghost, Draugr can also come about through an infection by another Draugr, which is where I think they get the, um, if a zombie bites you, you can become a zombie. Mm. Yeah. Um, some of the ways that they, they actually had, the Vikings um, had a way of preventing this, preventing Draugr from returning. Um, it said, the Vikings believe that if even one person was dead, their body could still move and harm other people. A draugr would go around and hurt anyone in his way. Many precautions were carried out to prevent the draugr from wandering around. Straw would be put under the shroud, and a pair of scissors would rest in the chest of the dead. The big toes of the dead were tied together so he couldn't move. So when the funeral came to the part, when when the funeral came to the part of transferring the coffin to the graveyard, the bearers would stop before stepping out of the house. They stopped inside, lowering and raising the coffin in three directions to make the sign of scissors. There were times that the dead were carried through the door for the corpse or the cop spot or the cop's door. It was simply a hole in the wall with a brick cut with a brick covering. Once someone died, the bricks would be removed to make the way. Once the ritual was over, it was rebuilt. Because the Vikings thought that the dead would return through the way that they came out. If the dead were buried in the graveyard, there would be an additional ritual that a powerful man would use the magic words to tie the dead to the coffin. So there have been, Draugr have been heavily uh, featured in a lot of, in several films. There was a horror film called Drog, which is about a group of Viking soldiers encountering, encountering a Draugr. 
in Sweden. A short film titled Draugr heavily features Draugr as a primary antagonist in a post-apocalyptic future where humanity is at war with them. There were two types, the Draugr thralls and the more powerful Draugr priests. Um, there was a show called Sleepy Hollow. Uh, Draugr appeared in, that, in an episode of that. They've been in literature, um, the Morganville Vampires, the Sword in the Satchel, the, the Barrow Whites of Middle Earth are based on Draugr. So even Tolkien has talked about Draugr. And the way I was actually introduced through Dra to Draugr is through video games. As you all know, I'm a huge video game nerd. And one of, the fun one of my most favorite video games is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And they are huge inside that game. And in, this, in, and in Morrowind, um, they are also in um, The Elder Scrolls Online. They are, they are heavily featured in that. Um, they are, they've been in The Witcher 2. They're in World of Warcraft. They're in another game called Valheim. Draugr are very, very popular. And I think they're probably very very much part of the reason why Romero's uh, zombies have kind of gotten the way they are because I think he's dug deep into myth, uh, zombie lore to create his zombies. Yeah. Actually, a couple, a couple of things. Um, one thing is, you know, I, I did read a little bit about Draugr and, in fact, actually Monstrum did a short episode about them as well and um actually i wouldn't be surprised if george george rr R. martin used draugr as like an inspiration for the white walkers or yes in the novels or in the novels they would be called the others but yes. you know yeah yeah because i mean i know he said in interviews that he did use like um some of the more celtic Irish lore about Fae and the Seely and the Unseely and stuff like that. But then he also, um, well, he never actually said he used Draugr, but you can kind of guess from, especially how the TV show adapted the novels, that they totally used Draugr for that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. But, you know, actually, since you mentioned Romero, um, that's actually the second part of the Monstrum trilogy on zombies was actually an entire episode dedicated to the George Romero zombie movies. And apparently one interesting thing that came up was that he, well, we talked about this like before we started recording, but actually he, he claimed that he didn't, wasn't overly familiar with like the Haitian uh, voodoo concept of the zombie, which I talked about uh, a few minutes ago. But especially at the time, like, he did his first movie, Night of the Living Dead. He said, actually, he was more inspired by I Am Legend when he came up with his zombies. And, in fact, he said that he never called the creatures zombies in the original movie, and he never personally referred to them as being zombies until much later, after people kept calling them that. And he was like, okay, fine, you know, you're, you're calling them zombies, fine, they're, they're zombies. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah, I I mean, if I remember, it's been so long since I've I've watched any of his uh, any of the George the Romero uh, movies, but yeah, he never. I don't think he ever really did. And they they don't they've never they never referred to them as zombies in The Walking Dead either. They were always known as the Walkers. Right. They they've never been a. As far as I know, they've never they were never addressed as an actual zombie. Even yeah, because it's what they were. Yeah, I wouldn't. I kind of like related to what I was talking about, like in terms of you know the more historical, you know, origins, what have you, of zombies. I kind of wonder if that's a conscious decision not to call them zombies because of the fact that there's this complicated, you know, situation where. You know, you have voodoo, and they do have a concept of zombies. It is part of their 
you know, religious belief about how, you know, people who misuse their powers, their spiritual powers can actually do something like that to people. And, you know, there's this uncomfortable, you know, thing about, well, okay, now you're co-opting the term and you're talking about something kind of different, you know, so... I don't know. I would be actually kind of fascinated to find the answer to that question. Yeah. Personally. I guess, like, um, the third part to that uh, Monstrum series was actually about the more modern interpretations of zombies, like post-Romero. So you do have what they call the more scientific um, origins of zombies, where it's like some crazy disease causing a pandemic and it turned people into zombies. So, you know, you have, like, stuff like I Am Legend, and you have um, 28 Days Later. I was yeah, going to say 28 Days Later. And, yeah. Yeah, those movies. Oh, And, and then 28 uh, Weeks Later. Right, and um, I think, like, World War Z. Mm-hmm. World War Z was another one. Yeah. There, there's quite a few that are, like, this post-Romero movie pop culture Hollywood interpretation of the zombie, uh, along with Walking Dead which we've already mentioned. So I, th yes. I think that's pretty interesting. The concept that the zombie, like any other monster, is a representation of um, societal anxieties about something. Mm -hmm. So we're now yeah. like our anxieties are about disease. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, I am legend. And I, I looked it up. I did miss, I, I misspoke on to the, as to when it was set. It was set in the year 2020. It was set in the year 2012. 2012. Huh. So. Okay, we, were, we, we, we survived. <laughs> yeah, we survived it. Yay! We're safe! We're safe! Yay! <laughs> but, no, because it was... I'd heard multiple, multiple sources say that it was from... That it was set in the year, like, 2021 or 2022. So, I am sorry, I did misspeak on that one. So, it was set in the year 2020... 2012! As to, like, what Sam said earlier in the beginning of the episode, like, I am not a huge fan of horror in general. But there's, like, some horror things that I am okay with mm -hmm. watching. Uh, unfortunately, Zombies is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like zombie movies, but I like zombie movies and zombie stuff and horror things in my own way. Mm. Like, I enjoy... Like, I enjoy things like, I don't mind watching zombie stuff because I know it's fake. I, is, even as real as it looks, I know it's fake. The stuff that I can't watch and I have trouble watching, or I should say I cannot watch with the lights out, are things like Annabelle, when it's like the haunted dolls. Right. And, and shit like that. Or stuff that's like based on true, like, based on a true story. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, Yeah. I believe in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I just, I personally couldn't really get into zombies. I mean, like, aside from the fact that, like, I'm not into creepy, grotesque things, um, it's a, it hit, I mean, not that, like, my culture believes in, like, zombies or anything like that, but mm -hmm. there's, like, I've, I've subconsciously absorbed certain superstitions related to, you know, funeral prop procedures and you know the afterlife and stuff like that and like right. yeah zombie undead things like that is a little too creepy for me i think um, i just have a fear just like with sharks i have a fear of being eaten so you know zombies are are a no-go for launch for me nope don't don't nope Nope. I mean, everybody has their has their things. I'm like I said, I can't do I can't do things like uh like Chucky or Annabelle or you know the 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 paranormal where it's really not explained what the hell is going on. Right. Like the psychological thrill, the like psychological horror stuff is. I'm not into that. I, I don't like that stuff because that's that shit's too real for me. Right. But yet, I so can like sit there and I can watch. Final destination, not your cup of tea. I, I watched the first one. I have not. I did not watch any of the other ones. <laughs> yeah, I made it to the first one. I was like, yeah, nope, nope. 
I still do not. I the minute I see a, a log truck, I I move. <laughs> I do not stay behind it. I do not. Yeah, but you want to know what like, and one of the things that make zombies still just like so scary, like the advancement of science. Like I mentioned, I am legend. How it was mm-hmm. off of a uh, the cure for cancer. With the with science going the way it is, and like they're they're making all of these things, and like they're hoping to find cures for all these diseases and stuff. Like I can't help but think like someone is going to cause a zombie apocalypse. It's just gonna happen. One I'm still not, I'm not here. That the COVID shots didn't do it. Haven't haven't caught aren't gonna cause us to have the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> you know what's so funny is when they were first talking about the the uh shots for for covid and i you know didn't do enough research and i was like wow they did it that fast like this is going to be the zombie apocalypse and then i found out they've actually been working on it for like 20 years so i was like okay i feel a little bit better (laughs) at least it wasn't like a you know a quick thing yeah but i just i think it's the fact that it was an mrna Mm -hmm. it is what kind of i mean obviously I, i i got the shot and they but said it just all, kinda, a lot of uh, vaccines are going to be like that now. So if it's not COVID, it's going to be something else. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm like, I'm not quite that, I'm not as skeptical about science. I'm actually, where, where a lot of my, you know, um, fears about about stuff is actually more like what is truly unknown. Like, you can't touch it, you can't see it, you can't feel it so it's like all you know things like ghosts and you know the afterlife that is what actually spooky to me it's more that's more disturbing to me because it's like you can't possibly get a handle on that you know because it's like as you know as like revolutionary as like scientific discoveries are it's like you still can have proof that it is a thing you know of some kind but it's like, you know, noises in the dark. Unless you somehow are going to run around figuring out where that noise came from. Like, what, what is it? Like, what, you know, what could it be? That, that is what creeps the hell out of me. So. Oh, and I'm a firm believer in ghosts. I believe ghosts exist. I mean, I think they're possible. But again, it's still like, you know, I, I would prefer not to have an experience with one. <laughs> I'm I'm okay with acknowledging the possibility that they exist. I don't need actual proof that they do. <laughs> I, def- you. I, d- I definitely believe that that when you pass, you're still around. You know what I mean? Like I don't know about like go- though. I do believe in ghosts because like there's just too many times like freaky stuff happens that mm-hmm. is not explained. That it could only you know. But, like, I, I just, I really do believe that, like, you know, the people that pass away, like, they're, they're, they're still here in some capacity. Uh, but For a yeah, while, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess, like, before we move past the cultural, historical part of our episode, um, I do want to mention, like, not that I know this particularly well, because my parents didn't really teach me that much about, you know, the more supernatural aspects of my culture. Um, partially because my, my parents honestly don't believe in some of these things, but also um, my mom's side of the family in particular, we're Catholic, so we don't talk much about it. But there is actually a creature that, um, depending on, like, the translation of, you know, how, how you would refer to this creature... It could be called a vampire or it could be called a zombie. Although, based off the description, I think it fits more like a zombie. But I'll, br- I'll mention this creature again when we do our uh, hint hint, our vampire episode. But um, there is a creature called the Jiangxi, which does, which is also like basically a dead body that comes back to life through all sorts of odd circumstances and reasons and whatnot, kind of like with the Draugr. 
Mm -hmm. Um, one aspect of this creature that makes it also fit to some degree, um, the definition of a vampire is that it doesn't come back to suck blood, but what it comes back to take from you is your chi. So in a sense, it's a type of vampire as well, because it's trying to suck your life force, basically. And in, in a manner of speaking, blood is, in many cultures, you know, a type of life force, mm -hmm. you know, both literally and figuratively when you think of it. So, yeah, that, that happens to be another creature. And there, there's quite a few other ones, but, you know, things like Revenants as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. We could, we could I know keep... it had that. I, I know that. I know it has absolutely nothing to do with zombies, but that was a damn good movie. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was just no. a damn good movie. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I guess uh, we'll close out this episode with like um again talking a little bit about pop culture, uh, movie, TV depictions of zombies. Um, we've already mentioned a few, but um. Any others that you guys want to bring up or you want to well, discuss a little bit further on? Well, here's one that I th I thought was very interesting. And I mean, I, I know we don't talk about religion much, but I do have to bring this up because there actually is references to zombies in the Bible. Huh. They're okay. actually, it's I mean, Easter. not obviously... <laughs> oh, yes, Easter, but there's uh, there's a couple other ones here. I mean, there's 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 many other ones. Um, the Book of Ezekiel describes a vision where Ezekiel is dropped in a boneyard and prophes and prophecies to the bones. The bones start to shake and become covered with muscle and flesh till they're reanimated. Yet there was no breath in them. And oh, the book of and the Book of Isaiah states, "Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise." Awake and seeing ye that dwell in dust, for thy dew is the new is the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Mm. So I mean, there there's also besides obviously the most famous one of Easter, <laughs> but there's a couple. So that's a couple other ones that I really, obviously, I have not read the Bible in years, and I don't remember all of it, and I don't remember these passages, but. I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Whether you do or do whether you do or don't believe in the Bible or or whatever, you know. Just in, if you just look at it as a book, is it's quite interesting. Go into our medias. So I yeah. looked up Rotten Tomatoes has a list of 30 essential zombie movies. Oh my. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that they're necessarily the best, but they are what they consider essential, and it's movies that they feel you need to watch. So, at, coming in at number 30, Night of the Comet, 1984. Uh, number 29, Wan of the Dead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, number 28, Little Monsters. 27, Wild Zero. 26, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. <laughs> 25, Resident Evil. Oh, yeah, Resident Evil. Ooh, yeah, those are good ones. Yeah, I forgot about that one, yeah. Uh, number 24, yeah. Cemetery Man. 23, mm -hmm. Death Dream. 22, mm -hmm. 28 Weeks Later which we mentioned before. Yes. 21 is Versus. Uh, number 20, Night of the Creeps. 19, I Walked with a Zombie. 18 is Warm Bodies. 17, Planet Terror. 16, Zombie Flesh Eaters. 15, Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Uh, 14, Can World I just War say II. I haven't heard of half of these? I know. That's what I was thinking. I've heard of this or one. Or I should say, I haven't heard of most of these. Yeah. I, it's like, yeah. I think maybe I've heard of two so far. Yeah, 28 weeks later in Warm Bodies. <laughs> oh, and Resident Evil. Resident Evil. 
in Resident Evil. In Resident Evil, okay, there's three. Three. I've heard of three. Uh, number 14, World War Z. I've heard of that one. Four. <laughs> 13, Dawn of the Dead. Five. <laughs> 12, Day of the Dead. Okay, now we're getting just now we're getting into my era. Eleven, one cut of the dead. That has uh, a one hundred percent fresh rating, by the way, on Rotten Tomatoes. Huh. And yeah, based on the names, it is in a. I I don't know if it's it's Asian. Uh, which mm-hmm. I'm sorry, they they definitely make some of the best movies so that doesn't surprise me that it would be 100 true. true uh number 10 I agree with that yeah uh number 10 the return of the living dead okay number nine dead alive number eight mm. reanimator number mm-hmm. seven is wreck number six is 28 days later Number five is Zombieland. I've heard of that one. Number four is Night of the Living Dead. Number Mm -hmm. three is Train to Busan. Or Busan. Train to Busan. Oh, I said that right. Woohoo! Number two, Shaun of the Dead. Okay, that was (laughs) that was just funny. And number one is Dawn of the Dead. I'm guessing it's the original compared to the other one. So that's the top 30 essential movies. There's a million and one lists of like the best or the goriest. Uh, yeah. Ugh. But since I don't watch zombie movies, I couldn't tell you which ones were the best. Nope. I don't know. I, I, I like 28 Days Later. It was pretty good. Yeah. Shot of the Dead is just funny. Yeah, it's like a uh, yeah, it's like it, a goofy one. Yeah, it's an irreverent look at the zombie at zombie movies. It really is. It was kind of funny. I've watched it a couple of times. Okay, that that movie I might be willing to watch just because it doesn't take itself too seriously. It, it really doesn't. If I'm if I'm remembering it correctly, it does not take itself seriously at all. It's been several years since I've watched Zombie it, Land though. as well. Zombie Land's a uh, a funny movie. It has like Woody yeah, Harrelson, yeah. Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, that was more of a comedy one. Uh, I yeah. believe that's the one Amber Heard is in for like two minutes and she turns into a zombie and gets killed. Great. That might be that might be worth to watch it just for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Sorry. 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 <laughs> I brought it up, so I guess it's right. Hashtag more. sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there's like a million and one movies and tv shows obviously tv shows uh-huh. um are still actually being being made um what did uh-huh. i say it was actually just being filmed by me um walking dead thank you i just answered my own question yeah. so the walking dead <laughs> uh i just found out like a few weeks ago was on uh, filming like the next town over and like shut down like the the highway uh to film and then just last week i believe they were filming in newark so i'm like all right it's a little too close for home go somewhere else bye bye <laughs> <laughs> go away though so i have to say if i was an actor i kind of want to play a zombie just because like you don't have to say anything you know, like you don't have to say anything. Yeah. You just have to walk slow, and you get to mm-hmm. wear all like this cool makeup and stuff. Yeah. Though, depending on like how, how like they do the makeup, like it could be a little claustrophobic. I think, as well, but yeah, d- depending. But yeah, let's see. Movie Web did do best zombie TV series ranked. I can do that real quick too. It's only yeah. thirteen. So it'll be quick. Number 13, In the Flesh. It was only on for one season. <laughs> Great. Uh, number two, Dead Set. The British miniseries. Uh, number 11 is Z Nation. 
ran for five seasons. Tales of the Walking Dead comes in at number 10. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Number nine is Ash vs. Evil Dead. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a name. Uh, number eight is The Returned. Number seven is Fear of the Walking Dead, which is currently still running. Yes. Number six is I Zombie. Number five is Kingdom, which is a South oh, Korean yeah, horror Kingdom. series. It's also still yeah, um, filming. It is. Number yeah. four is Black Summer. Number three is Santa Clarita Diet, which I've heard mixed reviews on, but. I, is that really? I didn't think that was about zombies. I thought that was about cannibals. No, I think she's dead. Uh, I haven't watched it, but I think she, or I'm sorry, she has zombie like symptoms. So I don't know. But in all honesty, I mean, besides the fact that zombies are like dead, like what are the difference between zombies and cannibals? Yeah. What, one's breathing, not one's not. <laughs> True. There's not a whole lot of difference. Yeah. Ugh. Although cannibal, well, I guess the only thing is cannibals, cannibals don't necessarily. Cook their food. Yeah, they cook the food and they don't necessarily infect you if you if they get if you get bit by one. You don't turn into a cannibal. True. That would be the biggest difference. You write when you write. You write. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> all of us are dead. Also a Korean, uh, series, and mm -hmm. number one, shocker. Not shocker, uh, The Walking Dead, which is also still running. Since I mentioned uh, that they were just filming, <laughs> I mean, ha, huh, still running. Uh, uh, but mm -hmm. they're walking. Oh, I'm just gonna no. say it like you can outrun a zombie unless they kind of like one of those fast zombies, like in freaking uh, I Am Legend. Oh, where, like, and oh, World War Z, Z. It's like that too. Yeah, yeah. But if it's like The Walking Dead, yeah, because it because they they didn't have the feral zombies at night that ran. Yeah, yeah. That was a Romero thing. Or no, Romero zombies always just walked. Thanks for listening, everyone. Catch us next time and see what we're going to talk about. Because the three fates decide.